Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday afternoon on Gulfstream Today. I'm Gabby Gaudette, joined by Acacia Courtney. And it's felt like a long time <laughs> since we've been on this stage. Of course, we were absent for the past couple of days, actually since last Thursday doing duties up in Maryland. It seemed to be a fantastic weekend up at Laurel. It was, and it seemed like it was a great weekend here as well, but we had a, a lot of fun up in the north and pretty creative ideas going on there as well. It was Fantasy Owners Day on Saturday, so it was pretty cool. I, they had a lot more people, close to 300 people sign up for this seminar, way more than anticipated, and they got to not only be the owners of a racehorse for a day, but they actually get to keep that horse through the end of the year. It's kind of a competition going on, some prize money throughout the end of the year, and it was so fun to see these people in the winner circle getting a taste of horse ownership and can't wait to see what else they do in the game. $50,000 actually to the top five who mm -hmm. um, round up that round up the most amount of points by the end of the year, and like you said, almost 300 people there in attendance and a lot of unfamiliar faces, which is always a mm -hmm. good thing to see horses or people really without a horse background just mm -hmm. wanting to come out and take part on Fantasy Owners Day. So really excited to see that and all that Maryland is doing. We saw a lot of new renovations. Actually, I was back for Barbara Fritchie weekend in the middle of February and in the time being, still more renovations. So always really good to see that. Good to be back here, though, as we're ramping up for an exciting couple of weekends. Acacia, of course, this coming weekend will be the Dubai World Cup. We have a lot of local horses going there, including Sharp Azteca, Mind Your Biscuits, and of course, Pegasus World Cup contenders, including Airgate, Keen Ice, Neolith Neolithic. Yeah, so definitely f uh, exciting for us to be able to follow those horses that ran here now over in Dubai. I had the, the privilege of being at the Dubai World Cup last year when California Chrome did win. It's a, really a place like no other in the world. So pretty cool to be able to follow this weekend and some pretty spectacular spectacular horses there. We also have some interesting runners in the UAE Derby, which could um, get you some points for the Kentucky Derby. So definitely some interesting betting interests and horses to watch across uh, across the world, I guess, really. Absolutely. And you're talking about the UAE Derby. We're talking about those potential derby preps. Well, it's in our sights as well as we are a week away from the Florida Derby post draw. So everything is really coming together there. A couple of horses probably making their final prep workout uh, this coming weekend, including Gunavera. So a lot to look forward to in the next couple of weeks here. But a lot to look forward to today as well. So we'll take a look at our featured wagering menu. We start things off as always in today's opener with that rolling super high five that carries on throughout the day with seven or more betting interests. Race one also starts the 50 cent early pick five. Acacia will have a ticket for that. Moving along to the fifth race and the rainbow six does start and uh, big, big carry over today, $865,000. And usually when it gets to this level uh, in terms of uh, the carryover, it's kind of hard to hit, but I like the sequence today. It did come up with a ticket in race six, late pick five does kick off. Acacia will have a ticket for that. We are fast and firm. We've got 10 races on tap for this 12.35 p.m. first post. So, as usual, we'll start things off with the first, and we'll take a look at your early pick five ticket. All right, well, let's show you my ticket. I have a single in here, and uh, hopefully the rail is good in the first four races, because they do seem to go towards the inside horses. But you see there's a heavy favor right now in the opener with Getaway Car, but I'm using four horses to start things off, then three by three, just two in the fourth. And I'm singling in the fifth, um, on uh, on the number nine requesting in there. Ecliptical My Way is actually the morning line favorite, but I really like this horse in that spot. So trying to keep things affordable, $36, that'll be my single. All right, I like it, $36 flat with a single in the last leg. Hopefully we get to the last leg here as we start things off with this 62.50 non-winners of three lifetime condition. We're going seven furlongs on the main track, and you were alluding to a horse, and that is the three getaway car uh, for Rashawn Crickey. This is a horse who actually is getting more distance to seven furlongs. It did face a uh, similar company last time out, um, but I think is really sharp at seven furlongs. So that's where I did 
for, for him. I also thought that there was a little bit of suspect speed in here. You landed just towards the inside to, to the two Juan Gusto. And I certainly respect Getaway Car. I agree with you. I like him much better at the seven eighths versus a little bit shorter in the six furlongs. Last time it looked like he found a race where it really was closers. You can see the winner in El Senor de los Cielos. We know he's a horse that's running from behind, but Juan Gusto, I just kind of went with him on the class. Now he used to show so much speed. Then he actually had uh, some, was claimed a couple times, some barn switches, and he hasn't really shown that same kind of early zip lately, but maybe with the drop in class, you've mentioned the suspect speed. I think that his speed, should he show it, is probably the most legitimate speed in the race. So that's kind of what I was looking at. We could see it, and I think you'll know from the get-go as soon as the gates open that if Juan Gusto does go to the lead, it might be all said and done from there. As you said, he's got back class, and he used to have speed. That's why I was, I was a little bit, I was proceeding with a little bit of caution here just because all of that early speed has just kind of disappeared as of late. But the sixth Dazzling Deputy is a horse who should be forwardly placed, especially getting at a distance of the seven furlongs. He was bet heavily last time out after facing open company in the race prior. And I know Lil Meatball beat him mm -hmm. and he was coming out of okay races. But it really wasn't that great of a field, and I didn't think that he should have um, been defeated last time out at 30 cents to the dollar. Absolutely. It was technically a little bit of a class relief, but don't forget that that race in Open Company two starts back was on a sloppy track, too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of a tough race to gauge out of, though, as you said, Lil Meatball was coming out of better races. But at such a, a short price last time, he probably will take money again today with Jose Ortiz in the saddle. Uh, another one that I, I kind of the same way proceeded a little bit of caught with a little bit of caution, but he should be up close and forwardly placed, um, which could certainly put him in a right spot. All right, we'll get to the second race, an open 62.50 claiming event. We get seven furlongs on the main track once again. And uh, we'll start towards the inside, one of them being the one, Bezad's Pride, now getting to the John Service Barn for the first time. Keisha, you opted for this horse. I was trying to find stats for John Service, kind of first off the trainer switch with these low-level claimers. Not a huge sample mm -hmm. size. I think he's done it maybe three or four times in the past five years. Yeah, and just looking kind of broadly, I was doing the same thing first after the trainer switch, just in claiming races. It's o actually only 0 for 6. So maybe that's something that can talk you off of it. I just thought it's such a short, a small sample size. I had a tough time kind of going off of that. I bet lately his races, he hasn't really been matching up um, to some of the other horses in the field from a number standpoint. So I know that he's kind of up against it in that, but I do think he has some back class running very good seconds and thirds against much, much tougher company than what he'll face today, even $30,000 condition claimers. So I do like the barn switch. I like that he gets in with a lightweight towards the rail. Um, he could be forwardly placed certainly and sit a nice trip. And uh, we have a couple horses coming out of the same race and I, I kind of ended up going to somebody else instead, though I do respect Flashing Cat and Starship Apollo. You wanted a new face, and <laughs> we'll go back to two familiar faces that come out of the same race last time out, and this is Flashing Cat and Starship Apollo. And Flashing Cat was forwardly placed in here. He did show some early interest. He's the number seven in here. Um, he was in a good spot just kind of as the pace setter faded, which I do think um, was really key for him in this race, but Starship Apollo was closing on the outside with a really big kick. He's the number six. He was coming on very strongly, but now Starship Apollo has been claimed in the barn of Bernardo Lopez. I thought both of them were game coming down to the wire, but I do think that perhaps Starship Apollo ran a little bit of a stronger race considering the fact that he did have to close on the outside. And it looked like Flashing Cat, w it just took a long time for him to get into the gear that he needed to be <laughs> in. We could see him. It looked like at the quarter pole, he really wasn't going to finish anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then he came back again. And the thing that I like about that performance and why I opted for him over Starship Apollo was that he came back and he was mm -hmm. actually fighting back to the wire. Yeah. After he was passed, uh, he could have been beaten probably a half length, but he came back to just be nailed at the wire by a head. That said, as well, Starship Apollo is coming out of a new barn and we'll show you a stat for Bernardo Lopez. First off the claim on the dirt, only one for 20, that's 5%, 97 cent, negative ROI, and 35% in the money. So I didn't think it was a bad race by Flashing Cat. Gilberto Zerpa uh, can get these horses fit and ready to go. He's a two-time winner at seven furlongs. And I didn't like that stat that I saw from him. 
saw from his main foe mm -hmm. in Starship Apollo. And that's totally fair. I, I did prefer Flashing Cat over Starship Apollo as far as my top selections went. The only other one I think really is the number five high quality Prince who just always sort of seems to be there. He uh, doesn't seem to get to the winner's circle very frequently. Of course, just three for 39 on form, but does have Jose Ortiz in the saddle. And he's got some speed to him as well. We could see him finally get to the winner's circle <laughs> here. Once again, we get to the third, an open $16,000 claimer for Philly, Phillies, three years, for three-year-old Phillies, excuse me. We go out to the turf at the mile. And I kind of was a little bit all over the map here, mm -hmm. but then I decided to have a little bit of an opinion on the five. Testa Ruta will go back and show her most recent performance at Tampa. And I think that there are a couple things that can really uh, come out of this race. We'll start with the break and show how she did kind of break in a bit at the start. She was a little bit all over the place. And then she was in tight quarters along the rail. And you can see there, she just kind of gets squeezed up to the rail. She doesn't really look comfortable. She didn't look comfortable at the break. And then unfortunately, it took her a while before she really got comfortable enough to settle. Now we'll show coming around the turn and you can see how she's wide in there. Um, she was just kind of left with a lot of work to do after that break and early on she had no place to go behind the horses and then she came around to the outside and she really did come rolling down towards the wire. It was a good sized field in there. Perhaps maybe not as strong as, as some of the other races that she had run in before but I think one of the other key things in here is that this was her first time going two turns on the turf and I like her much better at the two turns than the five furlong sprints that she was running um, at Gulfstream Park West and Gulfstream before they shipped her to Tampa. So uh, after that, I think that uh, she is worthy of a top spot again. I thought that was key as well. It looks like she's just found her perfect um, distance on the turf. She wants two turns, and that's where she lands here today. Although she ran well at five furlongs, I don't think it is her preferred distance. So we'll show you a stat to kind of solidify this type of mood for a trainer, Angel Rodriguez, with his winners last out on the turf at the claiming level, 24% positive ROI of $2.37, 43% in the money, and that's 21 horses. So a decent sample size there. That's that's where you and I both land. But other than that, we would figure that maybe Flying Dude or even Grand Weekend would take some money. And of those two, I, I preferred the two Flying Dude. I just think that, yes, she hasn't been able to find the winner circle since facing Maiden Claiming Company at Gulfstream Park West. But I do think that this is probably one of the easiest fields at the level that she's faced in the past two, comparable to her last two starts. I think so, too. And uh, just on the class relief, certainly you have to respect the connections with Luis Saez up and Victor Barbosa. I want to quickly mention a horse out of price, and that's the one scrap the mandate who's going back to the turf. Now, she's only had one race on the turf before. She just was stumbled and bumped around at the start, and she just really didn't run a step in there uh, against maiden $25,000 types. But the dam did win long on the turf. Dave Braddy actually trained the whole family, so a little bit of uh, trust in him with Nikki Figueroa in the saddle as well. Maybe at a price might be able to hit the board. And we do see in summation sometimes do take a liking to the turf. So an interesting sniff out there in the third as we get to the fourth race. A starter allowance in for that $50,000 um, or $50,000 starter allowance. We go out to the turf at a mile and we do have a heavy favorite in the number one Starship Jubilee at six to five on the morning line coming off an explosive victory last time out. I can remember watching this <laughs> race and this filly was just widening the gap between her and the second place finisher. Is it believable, and can she duplicate it today? Oh, that's really the question. She was first off the claim. She had moved from the barn of Jorge Navarro to Tino Attard. She got an 86 by your speed figure for that performance, and she just went by so easily. It really looked like on paper, Whipsnade coming out of a trouble trip was the horse to beat, and she just blew by Whipsnade. Now, just looking at stats with winners last time out on the turf, uh, the barn is just two for 16, and it is a negative ROI. So um, not only looking at statistics, wise but also as you said it was a huge performance and you're saying well she's won well before but never like that so trying to get the repeat here was a little bit questionable for me yeah not to say she's a bad horse no, by any course. means because she's a four-time winner here out of eight starts at Gulfstream so she likes this surface uh, it was just 
it was a crazy victory, especially going against that level of competition. But you could argue that maybe she's just a better horse going two turns. She did spend a lot of time sprinting at five furlongs. Last time out, it was the farthest distance that she's ever been. So maybe that's exactly where she wants to be. And I like the fact that Tino Attard keeps her here at two turns on the turf. But six to five or around that, <laughs> I just can't take. Because I think the two, Wolf Gourmet is actually quite good. She has some back class and some back numbers that I think would make her pretty equivalent to your favorite in here. And last time out she was one of the few who was actually making up any ground in the latter half of the race i noticed that too and she was very wide in that race the top two horses were just ahead of the rest of the field they were certainly much the best in there um, in glory to kitten and bowtown cat both of them kind of forwardly placed bowtown cat being the main speed pace setter in there but i thought that she was trailing early and she really did make up a lot of ground it was on a good turf as well so now she gets back to the firm going and i think maybe at a little bit of a better price you have dale Romans and Corey Lannery, um, certainly no knocking those connections this meet. Absolutely not. And I think for this race, the key is to look beyond maybe the, a horse's last race because mm -hmm. I think they'll get a lot of uh, public attention from just the last race. I actually liked the six zippy speed a little bit at a big price here. Uh, she's 10 to one on the morning line. I thought she w went too far last time out and I also thought that she was outclassed. She's a city zip. She wants to go a little bit shorter than a mile and three sixteenths. So the cutback will help her and yes, she's going to have to run her fastest race in order to win, but she should be tactically positioned there in the fourth race. Looks like you and I agree on the exact as we We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll tackle the 20-cent Rainbow Six, a big carryover right after this. Saturday, April 1st, witness the country's best three-year-olds face off in the Grade 1 ExpressBet.com Florida Derby. An epic day of thoroughbred racing, the crowning event of the championship meet. Over $2.5 million on the line. It all comes down to this. The Grade 1 ExpressBet.com Florida Derby, only at Gulfstream Park. Derby champions start here. Saturday, April 1st, the ExpressBet.com Florida Derby. First race, 12 p.m. Welcome to your playground, Gulfstream Park. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve, give bettors the information they need to win, and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet, we are racing. Welcome back to Golfstream today on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon here in South Florida. We'll take a look at the 20 cent rainbow six today. It does start in the fifth race on this 10 race program and we have a nice carryover of $865,000 today. So I'm still keeping the ticket on the affordable side, although it might take a little bit more funds <laughs> to try to take this baby down if you want to be the lone single ticket here. But I know I noticed you singled the nine in your pick five, mm -hmm. I'm going to back myself up with the one ecliptical my way as well. So two by three by two by three by three by three, sixty four dollars and eighty cents. We'll take a look at this race to start things off. A made in twelve thousand five hundred event a mile on the main track. And we have two scratches in here. I didn't really think they affected anything. I, I do think there were two horses to beat in here, one of them being the number nine requesting just off back class alone. Absolutely, and that's what I like about this filly. They add the blinkers on here today. And it was interesting to see that she has kind of been taking um, maybe some ag aggressive drops in class, but she's going back to the dirt now. You look at her last dirt race. It was against Maiden Special Weight Company and against horses that went on to run in Graded Stakes Company. Um, we saw the winner, Queen Bernardine, Bernardina go on uh, into the Alcibiades and then Valadorna of course um, be second in the grade one Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly after that untapped as well trying graded stakes company so she's just coming out of a, a very strong race in her last dirt so if you look at just her dirt race made in special weight now to 12.5 on the dirt it's much uh, much a significant drop so she really hasn't shown too much in any of her races so far but on that class drop eddie keneally doing very well with some aggressive class drops this meet and she was beaten 17 lengths in that race but the first half of the field as you were saying is potentially going mm -hmm. against grade one grade two grade three company so huge class relief and that's why i did like her and i think uh, to play devil's advocate the only bad thing about her is that she really hasn't shown much speed at least on her lone dirt try so 
I think the blinkers go on to help remedy that problem, but it is always an issue um, that they just can't make up the ground in time. Whereas the one ecliptical my way towards the inside, I think she'll be more tactically placed. I don't know who actually is going to go off favorite here, especially with some of the scratches, but I think it's a little bit of a question mark here whether or not she's going to translate her form to the main track. It is, and she can, she's bred to like the dirt for sure, of course. Um, on the, the bottom side was pretty much all dirt, so I, I do think that pedigree-wise, she should be able to transfer that, but she's been very consistent on the turf, so it is interesting to see that first off the claim for Angel Rodriguez, they do try her on the dirt right away and with a class drop, so um, we do know that these connections put horses where they can win, where they can be successful, so I think you have to respect her off of that, um, but as you were mentioning with the speed and with the scratches, we did actually have a scratch of Chanaya, who I thought was going to be the main speed horse in here, so I wonder if that'll kind of force Ecliptical My Way to really go for from the rail, and it'll be interesting to see how the pace scenario works out after that. We could see that, and sometimes we we like two horses, and then it's <laughs> Bomb City in the first leg of the Rainbow Six, so we'll see how that all shakes out as we turn the page to the sixth race, this open $16,000 claiming event starting off at the mile on the turf. And of course, this kicks off the late pick five. Acacia, did you find a single today? I did. Uh, maybe another bit of a bold single in here, but we'll give it a try. I'm um, using two horses to start things off, spreading in the seventh race. They thought that you needed some coverage in there, using three horses in the eighth. And my single will come with Kismet's heels coming out of a very troubled trip in the ninth. But there are some really quality horses in there. So a little bit of a guess there, but uh, probably a short price horse that might be able to get me to the last leg we're all spread with four horses in the finale okay just using the one and the three in the sixth race to start things off and one of them being probably the main speed in here and that's the number three to kingfish um, can he sustain his speed today well that's really the question the, the main reason of why I like him is that I do think he's the main speed and he gets some class relief too because last time out he was running against $25,000 claimers and he was beaten three lengths to be third in there, but I think that his speed is certainly his best weapon. That's how he won at Gulfstream Park West to break his maiden by wiring the field, and I think that's what he's going to try and do today. I think that Love Conquers perhaps has some speed, but I don't think he's as fast, and I don't know if he'll be able to transfer that to the turf. It very well could be. I actually went with a, a question mark type of horse, <laughs> and that's the five over limit. Um, uh, they claim, Antonio Sano claimed this horse a few starts back, and he's actually been in pretty decent form as of late. I think primarily because they've put him against the right level of competition but now they go to the turf um, where he has actually tried turf before that was a while ago actually here at Gulfstream uh, back in January going seven and a half furlongs I thought it was a hopeful turf race and I don't think this is an overly competitive field here um, the only other issue is that he's run so many times so far this year already making his seventh start he is, and uh, it's a, he's an interesting one because I remember when he first shipped from Woodbine to Gulfstream Park West, just really liking him, really having a lot of hope for him. And the interesting was, thing was is that he showed so much speed, so much promise in his first couple race on, races on the synthetic, and then he just didn't really show that same kind of early zip on the dirt kind of hopeful on the turf as well and he didn't show that, uh, as much speed as perhaps we would have liked to see in that one turf start but I do think it was against some solid company in Sir Sebastian and Erasmus Dream so I certainly can't fault you for that I wanted to see one but maybe at a little bit of a price he might be able to come through in there the number one contour mar does is the other Antonio Sano and he does get some class relief too coming out of $25,000 claimers and the Sage of Monticello and does get Jose Ortiz uh, to uh, do the honors there. Um, I thought also, uh, you know, you, with the six Royal Flame is a horse that's been competitive, but I have like a, an inkling that this horse might actually be better on the dirt as uh, he did when his first start on the dirt. So a curious type of horse and a curious type of race as well mm -hmm. to start off the pick five. We'll turn our pages to the seventh race, though. So, uh, restricted state bred allowance optional claimer, uh, mile on to the turf and we wanted to go back and show you a video spotlight replay of total joint this was 
last time out, just beaten three quarters of a length. And we'll pick it up at the 5 16th pole. He's the number nine there that day. He actually had a, a pretty good trip early on in the race, and then he's looking for room, and he did have to kind of take up along the far turn. Unfortunately, he ends up kind of boxed in along the rail there. And you can see now just having to steady a bit, he just didn't look comfortable. Um, I think that was when Paco Lopez was perhaps trying to shift him to the outside, realizing that there was going to be no room for him to go in between horses or something like that. And you can see this race is just kind of a mishmash coming down the stretch. A lot of horses having to take up. Completely bonkers is the horse on the outside. He was last early and just came rolling with a lot of momentum. But all things being considered, I thought it was a pretty solid performance from Total Joint. Prince Vincenzo actually was in that race. He's had two other starts after that. I respect Total Joint, but uh, if you remember my pick five ticket, certainly wouldn't single him in here. And there's just been a lot of starts and stops along the way for this mm -hmm. horse. You were mentioning Prince Vincenzo's had a pair of races in between his last, whereas Total Joint, he's coming in off of a little bit of a freshening since the 1st of February. Prior to that, kind of gappy form from November, September, July, even May, going back in form. Um, but yes, he absolutely did lose his momentum at the quarter pole. Um, I, I think your analysis of it was spot on in that Paco just needed to get to the outside mm -hmm. a little aggressive there, <laughs> trying to get to the outside. Um, but this is a horse who I think definitely fits with this level. The four, though, for all the marbles, I know Pasta Giovanni, he's been known to have a little bit of speed, but I don't think it's going to probably sustain. Maybe it'll be a thorn in the side of the four for all the marbles, but I like him in here. I'm going to give him one more shot second off the claim for trainer Jorge Navarro. We'll show you a stat here second off the claim with his horses going a distance of ground on the turf. 32%, a positive ROI of $2.49, 51% in the money. This horse is a six-time winner here. He looks like the main speed, and he loves this distance. So I think this is a huge class relief for him. I do, too. He comes out of the Little Magician, so you obviously have to look at that. He won at this um, at the Open $16,000 level a couple starts back, and he's second off the claim in the Navarro Barn. Just looking at that stat, we know that Jorge Navarro does a great job, not only first, uh, but second and third time off the claim as well. Um, the only other horse I looked at was the seven fair prospect coming out of the old man eloquent. And this is a horse, he's just always consistent and he always puts forth a good try. And I do think you have to respect him off of that. All right, we'll get to the eighth race and open $25,000 claiming event. We're going five furlongs onto the turf. And I, I figure that the three Hanson's girls probably going to take some money here. Of course, the connections alone get heavily bet. We always see it in the afternoon. <laughs> Mike Maker on the turf, especially Jose Ortiz in the saddle. But I thought this horse was actually maybe vulnerable and maybe beatable in here. I think so, too. Actually only had two starts on the turf so far. They were um, both pretty solid performances going five furlongs, but that was at in Special Weight Company in Indiana, so maybe not the same level of what he might have faced down here. But what I really think is the key is that this horse has quite a bit of speed, and there just looks to me to be a lot of speed in this race. Ballyhoo Moon did promise to be forwardly placed, and he's a scratch, but I still think there are going to be a lot of horses that are better on or near the front end, and I thought that that would really set up um, for our top selection in threat. And I remember when uh, she tried the turf for the first time going the five furlongs, and she just looked like she loved that. I think she wanted no part of two turns and that um, competition last time out. I totally agree with you. And actually, I tried to find some stats for Gilberto Zerpa first off the claim with his turf sprinters. He just doesn't claim them quite frequently. So um, this is a horse who I think cutting back in distance and the blinkers on will uh, keep her right in the catbird seat. Now Luis Saez in the saddle with uh, that jockey change here. But the nine, my third eye, was one that I thought could also be competitive. She's actually making her second start off of the layoff for trainer Wesley Ward. We'll show a stat for Wesley Ward. Ward, second off the layoff um, on the turf. Now this is really just kind of honing in on his five furlong sprinters. So that's what you obviously have to pay attention to. A good race last time out, and I know we've showed these stats before. It is slightly a negative ROI, but the ROI with horses making their second start off the layoff, turf sprinting for Wesley Ward, is actually better than mm -hmm. first off the layoff. So she could improve. 
And you actually brought up a good point. I remember uh, one time when Wesley Ward had had a horse come off of a layoff, didn't really fire first off the layoff. If horses for Wesley come off of the layoff, show some promise, they do continue to get better um, because, as you said, a good ROI maybe second time out because he really is do doing a good job with horses coming off of a freshening. And I do think that she's also better at one turn. She broke her maiden against the boys this summer going one turn. It wasn't the strongest of fields for sure but I do think it was pretty respectable company so I respect her in here uh, and do think that she might be able to take another step forward we'll get to the feature race of the day that is race nine an allowance optional claimer we're going a mile and it's 16th onto the turf um may excuse me the dirt <laughs> I'm looking at Mutazen and all of his races are on the turf um and the heavy favorite in here and your single in the pick five will be the number six kismet's heels he really hasn't had the easiest of trips <laughs> as of late. No, he hasn't. And we'll go back and show his most recent one. And there is a lot going on in this race. So I'll, we'll do our best to explain what's happening. But he was drawn outside that day. He was number 11. So he's coming on the outside. He was running on from the back. And then he ends up just getting totally cut off by the number eight horse, Fermento, who ended up winning that race. So you see him have to check really sharply and move out. Now, it was actually the number seven, V's boy who was uh, the stewards decided the cause of the problem. But we're going to show the head on of the stretch as well so we can kind of get a better idea of what's happening. So here you can see that the seven did actually kind of drift out. It forced uh, maybe everybody to kind of check going on in there. A bit of um, controversial photo, uh, if you will, with uh, the inquiry and objection sign up after that. But I think that Kismet's heels really got a bad trip in there, to say the least. Yeah, there's no doubting that. Uh, we, we could, we could <laughs> that kind of... Can say with confidence. Exactly. We could probably argue that the seven came out or that the eight came in and just smushed everybody in the middle. Um, it, it was a very kind of controversial call, but Kismet's heels was squeezed out of position at a very pivotal part of the race at the quarter pole. So um, that's important. Of course, two starts back. He was second behind Neolithic. Neolithic, obviously, um, in Dubai, training for the Pegasus World Cup. Prior to that, I thought his race was huge against two other than allowance optional claiming company in Kentucky. I think the key for him is to sit close. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of taken away from him last time out with the outside post position. So smaller field, more manageable field. I'm hoping he kind of sits a stalking trip. I hope so too. That'll really, I think, be the key for him. He did show a lot of early speed in that race uh, in, at Churchill Downs, as you mentioned, um, against Dazzling Gem. And now you do kind of say, well, his last win was on the turf, but his last dirt races were against Top Company. And as we were saying, some trouble trips as well. Now, you alluded to Mutazen earlier, and this is a really interesting horse that I ended up putting in second, but I just was staring at for the longest time for Kieran McLaughlin. You didn't use him at all, but he was very impressive in his two U.S. starts so far on the turf. Um, he's interesting because he certainly is bred to like the dirt, so I think from that kind of standpoint, he is a five-year-old gelding trying the dirt for the first time, but I do trust Kieran McLaughlin and his judgment, so uh, looking to this one, he probably will show speed from the rail. I didn't know what to do with him <laughs> at all. I, and that's the thing. If he doesn't show speed from the rail, where is he going to be? And can he I, is it kind of make up the ground that might be lost? I don't know. I think I'm going to take the wait and see, although he is very nicely bred. He's nicely bred for the turf, too. I mean, mm -hmm. candy rides, and then you get Mr. Greeley on the bottom side. So he also is another one that's had a lot of starts and stops, of course, came, coming off of a pretty significant layoff two starts back. But he's been in form since then. I just This is a kind of a curious spot to see him after breaking his maiden on the turf. Um, other than him, I thought two other interesting horses would be either the four, Sail Ahoy, who I think has better races on the dirt. I think mm -hmm. this is a right move coming back to the dirt for Sail Ahoy. And even Face of Winter, this is a horse who used to last year had some really promising performances. Sometimes he's a horse that goes in and out of form, and it looks like he's actually gradually starting to improve off of that layoff. He's third off the layoff now. As you mentioned, he faced Greenpoint Crusader a couple starts back. The barn's still kind of waiting to heat up for Gustavo Delgado, but absolutely respect the connections, and you alluded to Sail Ahoy. He showed a lot of promise, very highly touted, uh, kind of on the Kentucky Derby Trail, finishing in the money behind Mohamed a couple of times. So, interesting to see see what he does. I agree. I like him better on the dirt, too. 
And we'll get to the 10th and final race today, the maiden $35,000 event, a mile onto the turf. And we wanted to go back and show you the last performance from the number three, Wilshire Star. He was uh, two to one in this event. We'll go back to the gate. And we'll look at the number three at the break in here. There was just, uh, you could see he um, kind of took a little bit of a turn at the break and uh, got a little bit further back. Now, what I wanted to highlight about this race is that the winner, Mr. Bricks, and we've said this a couple times, is the only one that had a good trip. Wilshire Star had to be pretty wide late because of that. There was just lots of shifting going on early in the race. Everybody kind of unhappy with their positions. And Wilshire Star was closing pretty wide. Mr. Bricks just had it easy and his way on the front end. And I thought that Wilshire Star actually was pretty game, all things considered, because the early part of the race was a mess. It was a mess. And we We've said it so many <laughs> times is that Mr. Bricks, nobody kind of went to the lead or they got into trouble trying to get to the lead. Mr. Bricks just slowed the pace down and went wire to wire. But the reason why I don't like Wilshire Star is not because of his last race, but it's because of his race two starts back when he managed to make the lead. They went 26 flat for the opening quarter, 51 and change for the half and he still couldn't win as the favorite. So although he has excuses in his last race, I couldn't look past his race two starts back. I totally agree with you. And even his race prior to that, he was beaten just by a neck. Giants voice was closing in that race as well and just out kicked there. But I thought particularly that one two back, just as you said, we both looked elsewhere. I landed on the five false accusation. Who drops in class for trainer John Service. Nick Juarez in the saddle, now third off the layoff. And I try to get tricky here. <laughs> I actually picked the eight to is a golden rocket. I loved this horse in here at a price. 15 to 1 is scratch. So instead of just defaulting to the five false accusation, I wanted to get a little bit <laughs> spicy here in the last race with the one French command. This horse could win or he could finish last. You really don't know because he showed no speed first time out. But it was against a much tougher group. We see bricks and mortar in there and even Brooklyn Bobby. Mm -hmm. Much uh, a tougher competition there. He's bred top and bottom to like the turf as well. So I'm going to give him one more shot with the drop in class from Maiden Special Weight Company to the 35. I almost put this horse on top, and I, I can certainly, you can see I actually crossed him off and changed my selections. He certainly could wake up in here. Maiden Special Weight to Maiden claiming on the turf in the past five years. The barn is just one for 12, but it's not the biggest sample size. Maybe this horse will just be a bit better than what he's facing. Exactly, and I that's, I I landed on him kind of uh, because Wilshire Star, I think, just is a little bit of a phony sometimes. And so <laughs> it's false accusation. He goes from uh -huh. having this huge performance, and he always seems to get in trouble out of the gate. So mm -hmm. wanted to have a new face in here, and I landed on the one. But that is races one through ten. Once again, we have a big carryover in the Rainbow Six, $865,000 today. Starts in the fifth. Thank you for joining us on Golfstream today. Pete Aiello will be up next with those scratches and changes. Good luck. Zipper is pulling away.